all the unique characters. I do let them bang. Yeah, I say, like, yeah, I'm a legend, man. I'm building my legs. All the stories and perspectives featured weekly. I wasn't fully committed to that choke, and I kind of sunk into it, started squeezing tighter, and I kind of heard him gurgle a little bit. I was like, oh. And all the combat sports you could ask for in the best state in the U.S. Like I said, Ohio versus the world. It's gonna happen, for sure. Watch out. It'll be cool, man. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna show them why the Ohio MMA scene is, in my opinion, one of the best MMA scenes in the country. This is Forged in OH. I-O. OH. I-O. OH. I-O. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 90 of Forged in Ohio. My name is Jake Murray and I'm the host of the podcast. When it comes to prospects and rising stars in Ohio MMA, look no further than the fighter joining me for this episode. He made his debut one year ago and has since rattled off four wins all inside the distance. Not only did those four fights not go to the judges, but they were all finished in the first round round via submission representing Black Lotus BJJ. Joining me today is Jacob Toth. Thanks for coming on the show, Jacob, and welcome to Forged in Ohio. Thanks for having me, Jake. Of course, man. Thank you for coming on the show. And there's no better way to start than your most recent victory at Cage Thunder Next Gen Fight Series 2, where you submitted Isaac Karg 43 seconds into the fight. Is that how you imagine this one playing out? Uh, the goal definitely, as all my fights, is always to get it out, out of there in the first round. I was definitely prepared to go three rounds. Um, I did see, uh, I did talk to my coaches and brother before. If I could get him down to the ground with a good takedown early on, I knew I'd have a good chance at finishing it. That's quicker than I anticipated, definitely. But uh, I was looking to get a first round submission, definitely. Yeah, keep that streak of first-round submissions going for you. The performance itself was amazing, but what makes it incredible is when you factor in the opponent. I think very highly of Isaac Karg. He's been on the show before, and it took you less than a minute to submit him. What were your thoughts on Isaac heading into the main event? I knew he had some pretty good striking. Uh, I watched a ton of film. Um, I thought his two best weapons were definitely going to be the, that teep kick. He's really quick with that, and then he throws a really good low kick. Um, haven't got to see him see him on his back, so I didn't really know anything about how his jujitsu game off his back would be. Got to see a little bit of him with uh, the takedowns. I thought they looked good. You could tell he wrestled a little bit, so I was interested to see how it would feel once I got the takedown, um, but the striking, I knew he, he was pretty good up there. Yeah, did you see anything while watching Isaac's first two fights in his film that made you think that you could get him out of there with a first-round submission, maybe a flaw in his game that you could exploit? I felt uh, immediately with a lot of kickboxers, they stand with that that stance where that lead leg is leading a little heavy. Um, that helps usually when they're throwing teep kicks and whatnot. So I felt if I could just shoot in, kind of throw something to get him to raise his guard a little bit and shoot it on that single leg, that was that was the goal from the start, definitely. It's really interesting to me when you say that you watched a lot of film on Isaac Karg because I feel like there's a range now in MMA where fighters are either really big students of the game, they watch themselves and their own performances and their opponents as well, whereas others hate watching themselves fight and rely on their coaches to provide all that information on their opponents for them. Where do you land in that range of watching film on your opponents? Oh, I watch, I watch a ton of it. I feel like it's, it's extremely important. I mean, to pick up on any tendencies and just kind of know what you're going out there against. Obviously, I think his last fight was like six months to a year ago before that. So you don't want to over, overlook him if he, if he's maybe not looking great in one area on that. A, a year is a lot of time to fix those problems. But uh, I, I definitely watch a ton of film, even if it's for a jiu-jitsu match. If there's something I can watch, I definitely am interested in it. 
Yeah, personally, I think that's the way to go. Even at the amateur level, watch as much as you can of your opponents. One argument against that, I guess, that I've heard from uh, talking to other fighters is that they almost fight to their opponent and their flaws rather than sticking to themselves. Have you ever struggled with that? I know the performances speak for themselves, but do you still have to remain in the mindset of, hey, I am Jacob Toth, let's execute my game plan? I think that's one thing um, my brother and my coaches always really preach is like, go out there, do your game plan. I definitely try to keep that in mind of like, I got to be doing my game plan, but it is good to be like, yeah, I know this is what he's doing. So I'm going to maybe switch up my game plan a little bit to better suit each opponent. Um, Going out there and fighting the exact same fight against opponents who against a grappler and a wrestler or I'm sorry, a grappler. And then like a kickboxer, obviously you want to fine tune it a little bit to fit your strengths a little bit, but Overall, I would say I just definitely kind of try to personalize each one. For this one against Isaac Karg, was there maybe more pressure on you with it being your first main event? And like we were talking about, probably the toughest opponent you fought to date. Uh, I definitely didn't feel much pressure. I think that comes from just, you know, I've been wrestling since I was four years old. Um, I've done probably 40 plus jujitsu matches. Um, and then we had a couple fights. The fights are definitely different, but I feel like with that much wrestling experience and being out there, I've wrestled in front of a ton of people before. So it wasn't anything really too, too different. Is that something that you could get used to competing in the main event? Oh, absolutely. It definitely is pretty cool. I think I would like to think that that was the most amount of, uh, like family and friends I've had come out. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but it was it was nice, and it continues to grow each fight. I have more and more people asking about when I'll be up next. What were the emotions like after the win, given how many friends and family were in attendance and the magnitude of the win itself, and did you do anything special to celebrate afterward? Um, You know, it, it felt great. Definitely, definitely it is uh, pretty nice to do it in front of people. I did take one... Uh, my last cage thunder fight before this one, I took a uh, short notice fight um, on six days. I think it was, I want to say six days. And I, it turned out that like nobody could make it. And in comparison to having a bunch of people there, I like it more. If people cannot make it, it doesn't change what I'm going to go out there and do same plan. Um, but it, I, I would prefer people there. Again, talking to fighters in the past, some people seem or seem to compare it like a, to a distraction when there's a bunch of family and friends there. For you, it's the opposite. You almost use it as motivation, and it helps you perform out there, it sounds like. Yeah, again, I think that's just uh, wrestling. Um, you know, you wrestle in front of your family and friends. Your friends are on the team. You're kind of just used to it. So definitely does not feel like a distraction for me but I could see where it might be for some people who have not competed so this was probably the biggest win of your career so far how pleased are you with the performance at Cage Thunder Next Gen Fight Series 2 I was really pleased I think that was pretty much the plan was pretty much just about that uh throwing that overhand getting in on that uh single leg it turned into being more of a body lock or like a kind of a high crotch, but for the most part, it was right along what we were going for. And then the plan was to get to his back and try to choke him out. So I was really happy with it. Yeah, I've seen that overhand and then shooting into a single leg before in your previous fights. Is that kind of a staple of your game? No, I'm definitely looking to, uh, well, well, yes, currently it is. I'm looking to obviously grow on uh, um, my setups and start showing some different things because I know my opponents will be looking for that in the future. Um, But I definitely do use it in the gym quite a bit. It's good to just raise their guard. It's just a quick, quick setup, pretty easy. And then you're just right in on the leg. So I do like it, but I'm definitely looking to grow my, um, grow my takedowns and how I'm getting to them. Well, good thing for you is you have a lot more time to develop those tendencies and and things as you grow as a mixed martial artist. Do you feel like this win over Isaac Karg was almost like a statement win for you, maybe elevating your name and profile in Ohio MMA? I think it was definitely a jump in opponents. 
um, uh, as far as like their level. Um, I think he was by far the best fighter that I fought by now. Um, he was up there in rankings for Cage Thunder. And I know he's had some good wins, and he looks re- he's looked really good out there. So I do definitely think it uh, showed people that I am able to get in there with some of the better fighters in Ohio. Talking with Jacob Toth here on Forged in Ohio, it was a really easy and short process watching your fights. I think you have just over six minutes of cage time through four fights so far. Is this the type of success that you expected to start your career? Um, I wouldn't say what I, I expected it. No, definitely not. But I will say in wrestling and jujitsu, I don't usually, uh, I don't usually have many matches back when I wrestled that were going to points or in jujitsu that go to points. I've always, always had the mindset. I want to get out there and I want to look for that, uh, finish. I don't really care how I get the finish, but, uh, I definitely am always going out there looking for it. If, so if I told you, you know, a year ago today, prior to your amateur debut at only 20 years old, that you would go on to start your career with a 4-0 record with four first-round submissions, would you have believed me back then? Probably not. I definitely would not have uh, thought I'd have four fights by now, that's for sure. I, um, I've said I'm going to take like six months twice now, and then back-to-back I end up fighting way sooner than I intend on, but um, yeah, probably not. I would be pretty surprised. Why have you wanted to take some time in between fights that those six months that you just mentioned? I think I'm a smaller 85er, um, and I'd like to start putting some size on and strength and then just round out my game a little more, get better, get better with the wrestling, get better with the jujitsu, get the stand up going a little better. So taking some time off, um, gives me time to really hone in on the things I'm looking to work on. So definitely just to try to try to grow, get better in different areas. So when it comes to 185, do you think that's the weight class in your future? Could you see yourself moving up and down? I mean, you're only 21 years old, so maybe that could happen down the line, but do you do you see yourself as a, as an 85 or moving forward? I see myself at 185 for definitely amateurs. Um, with, with having to weigh in the same day, um, it would be pretty hard to get down to 70. So I I see myself at 85 for foreseeable future, for sure. Would you say that's one of the things you're looking forward to most when it comes to turning pro eventually not being able to, or being able to weigh in on the day prior instead of the day before, like you are now as an amateur? Oh, that would be, that would be great to weigh in the day before that would, uh, I would definitely consider dropping to 70 in that case more so. But even if when that weighing in at 85, I still cut a decent amount of weight. So I would be uh, definitely happy with that. You're clearly very knowledgeable about combat sports, way more than I am. So when it comes to being a 185er and going down to 170, where do you think that you could reach your peak or be your best version of yourself at, you know, down, down the road? Where do you think your, your best self would lie? As far as weight? As far as weight, but also like what weight class you could best use your skills and also the opponents that would factor into competing in that weight class, if that makes sense. Well, as far as like wrestling and jujitsu have went in the past here, I've never really cut weight. I always, I mean, I, I wrestled for 14 years and then jujitsu here, I think around like five. So I pretty much never really cut weight except at fighting MMA. And uh, I feel like I like fighting at 185. I, I like not going into it too dehydrated because I, I can come out strong and I feel like I can last a pretty good amount of time when I'm feeling my best. Yeah, it's no secret that you're always looking for the takedown and your grappling skills are pretty advanced. You talk about your background. Is that always the game plan going in to get these fights to the ground and find a way to get these guys out of here like you have four times in the very first round? Um, Stylistically, the last four fights, I have known that's where I am going to have the most success. I'd really like to get out there and test myself on the feet I feel like I could show, put on a pretty good showing with that. But when it comes to uh, sticking to my game and sticking to a game plan, 
I definitely am looking to do that. So when the time comes for me to be on my feet, I think I'll be more than ready. But the last four fights, I felt that it makes the most sense to get in there and do that. I know we haven't seen much of it through four fights, but how far has your striking come in the year or so that you've been competing at least in mixed martial arts? Oh, extremely far. Um, I compared to where I started, I don't, it would not even be close if I was to spar myself when I started uh, boxing when I was 17, 16. So it, it has definitely come a pretty long way. Yeah, I love that measuring stick, comparing yourself now to sparring an older version of yourself. Is that something that you want to showcase and maybe will make a better effort of showcasing moving forward your striking skills? Or are you content with doing what you know best, grappling, wrestling in your Brazilian jiu-jitsu background and like you, like the success that you've had so far, the four first round submission victories? Uh, I mean, I'm definitely not like pushing to show it. I think it'll come out when it's needs to come out when I, when it's going to be beneficial for me to use it. Um, but I'm not like overly concerned if people think I can only grapple and, uh, I can't strike or anything. Um, I think I'll, I'll show, I'll show it when I need to show it and I'll just kind of stick to what is, uh, best fitting for that fight. Do you think it's almost like an advantage too? We just talked about watching film, uh, people might be able to pick up on your tendencies on the ground, but what you have to offer on the feet is really unknown. And maybe that's an advantage to you moving forward with your opponents, not knowing what you have to offer on the feet. Oh yeah, definitely. I think not, them not knowing what I have to offer on the feet. I mean, if I look back at my first three fights, I really didn't have much of any film on any of the opponents. So it was pretty hard to hard to figure out exactly what they were going to do. Um, even as far as like, am I fighting an orthodox fighter or am I fighting a southpaw fighter? That, you know, when I when I know something like that, I will uh, I will ask my sparring partners to kind of try to suit that fighter or fight that way. So understanding like what your opponent is going to look like on the feet or on the ground is important, and me not having shown it yet i think that's that should be helpful towards me for sure so you have two wins by rear naked choke and two via arm bar do you have a favorite technique or submission that you like to attack um no i i just like when it comes to mma my grappling style is completely different from jujitsu um when it comes to that i i guess I do like the rear naked choke getting on the back. I feel like once you get on the back, you're in pretty good position to end the fight. But I also have a whole nother arsenal of submissions that I, I have not got to show. And I, I look forward to being able to eventually. Yeah, I was literally going to ask that. How deep is that arsenal with what you have to offer on the ground? Uh, I, I mean, I'm always training jujitsu. Jujitsu, I started jujitsu before I started MMA. Uh and I've definitely just continued to progress and progress more and more. I think I think people will be pretty surprised if I uh, get to use some of it a little more. Uh, especially, I haven't got to show anything off my back yet, and I I would be happy to kind of get to use it. And even just, it's a different experience when you're fighting MMA to jiu-jitsu, so getting to experience using it in different areas would be nice. Do you think you're one of the most dangerous fighters in Ohio when fights get to the ground, knowing that you do have that deep arsenal of different tools that you can use to get these fights finished? Uh, I definitely think I have a very different uh, grappling style than a lot of the fighters that, I, that I've seen. I think there's a lot of great ground, ground fighters, people, great grapplers who are uh, in Ohio. But I think especially when it comes to mixing my wrestling and jiu-jitsu, I think I do it pretty well, and um, I would be, I would be uh, excited to. I'm excited to show it overall, definitely. Of the four submissions and fights that you have, does one stick out as your favorite so far? Uh, I'd say that my armbar at BCM, my fight back in April. Uh, I had a pretty cool armbar as a flying around arm helicopter armbar. That was pretty cool out of mount. So. I definitely like that one probably the best. I think it looked cool. 
Yeah, if you have a helicopter armbar on your record, why wouldn't that be your favorite fight? Once again, <laughs> this is Jacob Toth here on Forged in Ohio. You kind of talked about your background a little bit already, but I want to hear more about your story and how you started in combat sports. You said you started wrestling at four years old. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, my dad was the uh, Olmstead Falls takedown team uh, junior coach or youth coach. Uh, I have two older brothers. My oldest one's five years older than me. So he started the the younger program then, um, like five years before I, I was born. And then um, I was what? So I started at four years old. All three of my brothers, we all started at four years old. So I wrestled all the way throughout high school. Um, and then I started jujitsu when I was, I think I was 16 in my summer going into my junior year. And I started. Did it just through the summers until I graduated from a senior year of high school. And then after that, I pretty much have not taken. I, I think at one point I took two weeks off uh, due to an injury or maybe three weeks off. And then I've had like a couple I've had like, uh, you know, I might practice like five days a week or like take a week off for injuries. But as far as uh, since I was 18, I really haven't taken more than like three weeks off of uh, training, uh, just mostly doing a lot of jujitsu and stand up and just keep going. What actually compelled you to give jujitsu a try at 16 years old? Were your brothers also involved in that or what compelled you to actually give BJJ a try? So I kind of talked my, my middle brother into it, Logan, kind of talked him into uh, doing jujitsu, but I didn't want to go. And then it, it took a couple of weeks, like maybe a week or two. And eventually I started it and I, I actually liked it more than wrestling at the time, but I still had two more years of wrestling that I wanted to complete and keep going, see what I could do with that. So pretty much once I started it, I, I liked it immediately. So what, when did you actually realize that you wanted to compete in mixed martial arts, that you wanted to take the wrestling and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu background that you had and bring it over to mixed martial arts? I'd say probably around 16 or 17, but I will say I, uh, I had a fight signed. I think I was 18 and my brother also, my brother has not fought, but he also had a fight signed. I forget even what promotion it was for, but I was 18 at the time and, uh, it ended up falling through, but I had signed everything. All the paperwork was a go and it was for August that was like the first time I really got into it and I was looking forward to it, but then school came up. Um, I was looking at fighting. It just didn't happen. And then the following summer is when I got my first one with BCM. Were friends and family receptive to the idea? Were they hesitant about you wanting to potentially make a career out of cage fighting? Oh, everybody was receptive. I would say, except probably uh, my mom and grandma were probably not the biggest fan of it, but my dad was definitely all for it, as well as my uncles. What was the reaction in school, too, being that you were in school when you actually wanted to take a fight and make that amateur debut or a bunch of people around you hyping you up and thinking that you were the, the cool guy in their class, if that makes sense? Really, for like the first two years from like 18 to 20, I'd say I really didn't talk about it too much. Um, so not a lot of people knew. Uh, now more people know just because it's kind of been posted on some friend stories or Instagrams or whatnot. So now people definitely know a lot more, but then I don't think really too many people knew about it. I'm not sure if this was back in 2016, but how'd you, how'd you dis or when you were 16 years old, how'd you discover your gym, uh, black Lotus BJJ? My dad actually had done some work for one of the, one of the owners, um, they also were from Homestead Falls and lived down the street from a neighbor, so or a cousin, and we just went and tried that gym. And uh, Black Lotus has been a great gym. There's like five black belts over there, and just a ton of great people to train with. So I never left. I've cross trained a bunch of different places, but that's always been my uh, home spot. You're the first fighter I've had on the show from Black Lotus. What has the gym done for you? And really, how much have you grown under the, the Black Lotus banner? Definitely, uh, I always say when I talk to uh, other people who fight, I think with Black Lotus, one thing that I really like about them is uh, it's not really sporty jujitsu. It's when you go there, 
you're learning more. It's more of like an MMA based jujitsu. It's not an MMA gym, um, but you're learning more of that like MMA style of grappling, of top pressure. They're not encouraging you to uh, like pull guard and be on your back and go into leg locks as much. So I think that would just kind of the perfect gym to introduce me to to start going towards MMA before I even knew that was the plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've definitely helped a ton. Is there like a, a fight team per se at Black Lotus or are there a lot of guys there that want to give mixed martial arts a try or are they strictly there for the, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu? So there's one other MMA fighter, uh, Sam McGuigan. <clears throat> he, uh, he's fought in cage trainer. I think he's had like, I think he's around 11 fights right now. Um, and most all of them in Ohio, I believe. Uh, outside of that, there's not really a fight team, but the cool thing is there's only two of us. We have five black belts in there helping us. Um, several people who have had amateur fights five, 15 years ago. And then, uh, my boxing coach, uh, Steve Baum has had over like, I think 60 plus boxing matches. And he also fought once in MMA. So there's a lot of guys in there that, uh, really know what they're talking about and have been able to help, um, but as far as like a fight team, not yet. I'm sure we, we we're getting more towards it now. We're definitely structuring um, some classes more towards MMA. So it's been really good. You talked about cross training yourself, but what do you encourage maybe other MMA fighters in the area to cross train at Black Lotus and maybe advance their own BJJ skills? Well, I definitely think it would be a good thing. Uh, I'm getting some friends into it who I wrestled with my entire life. Uh, Sam's a great training partner. My brother, um, a guy named uh, Micah. I mean, I mean, we got a lot of different people in there. Five different black belts, like I said. And uh, on Wednesdays, my brother and I we coach a. Uh, it's more of like a wrestling for jujitsu class, a little MMA in there too. And I, I think it's definitely, it's really good to come learn jujitsu, but it's not like a sporty type of jujitsu you're you're really learning that top pressure game so I, I think it'd be great all right jacob it's about that time where i ask you what's next i'm assuming you're pretty injury free after a 43 second win so when can fans expect to see you back in there uh i mean i i said i wanted to probably wait about six months after i i, I was talking about possibly that october 5th card um We'll see. I, I don't really have any time for sure. I'd say within a year, definitely you'll see me in there. But as far as like a specific date, I do not know yet. After the win over Isaac Karg, you're now ranked first in Cage Thunder's amateur middleweight division. The title is currently vacant. So could that be what's next for you? Definitely. That'd be a, that'd be a pretty cool, pretty cool thing to add. add um, I'm not chasing it necessarily, if but it would definitely be something that I'd be pretty happy to compete for. It would it would be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. You fought at Cage Thunder 25, the promotion's first event at the Canton Civic Center last December. Is that a venue you'd like to compete in again, potentially in four months, maybe skip on the October card and compete at Cage Thunder's card in December again at the Canton Civic Center? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I definitely liked fighting at uh, the Canton Civic Center. That was a pretty cool one. That one was on uh, six days notice, the one I was talking about earlier. So it would be cool to get a lot of uh, fr of my friends and family out there. So I definitely could see myself possibly doing that one for sure. Yeah, I could easily see you in a title fight at that card in December at the Canton Civic Center. If you could book the title fight yourself, where does it take place maybe at that show? And who would be your opponent? Uh, for where it takes place, um, I don't I don't really have like a exact place. I mean, the flats is sweet, but obviously I'm not going to be doing that one a little too quick uh, on the turnaround to make weight again. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but if I could pick anywhere, definitely it'd probably be the flats. And then as far as for who, I don't have anyone in specific. I'm just kind of trying to keep training and get better. And when that next fight comes, I'll be ready for it. Yeah, fair enough, man. Being 4-0 with four submissions, are you craving a knockout? Or are you content showing off the skills that you have by submitting these guys? Well, I'm definitely content uh, showing off the submissions still and 
keep keep doing the, keep running uh, with the submissions and the ground game. But like I said, I have I have no problem standing on the feet, and that would be pretty cool to get knockout. I would be pretty happy with that. But I'm not chasing either of them. Uh, whatever comes, I, I'll take that. Yeah, that's the mindset to have. Last one for you, Jacob. How far do you think you can take your career? Not only, you know, in the amateur scene, but I'm sure you foresee yourself doing this for a long time and making a run as a pro fighter too. Uh, I just take it day by day, but uh, I definitely I definitely could see myself doing this for a while and just keep taking these fights, uh, keep taking, doing some jujitsu matches in between in the middle and just continuing to try to get better day by day, and uh, I'll see where I'm at in the future with it. Yeah, well, like I mentioned in the intro, you're one of the top prospects and rising stars in Ohio MMA, so people should definitely be jumping on your bandwagon and seeing what you do moving forward. Before we wrap up, anything you want to shout out here at the back end of the show? I uh, just thanks everybody at Black Lotus, all my coaches, and then thanks to all my uh, family and friends who came out. Thanks again, Jacob, for joining the show. It's certainly a good time watching you fight and witnessing the rise of Jacob Toth. Before I let you go, I always end these chats by doing the OHIO chant with my guests. So, OHIO. Thanks, Jacob. I appreciate the time. Congrats on the big win over Isaac Karg, and I can't wait to see where you go from here. Thanks, Jake. That was Jacob Toth, the 4-0 amateur mixed martial artist out of Black Lotus BJJ. I think Jacob's in the conversation for Rising Star of the Year, perhaps even Amateur Fighter of the Year, especially if he can get one more in before January. And who knows, maybe he'll be up for Submission of the Year. There's no doubt that he's really crafty on the ground, and I promise that Jacob Toth's a name that you should all know and look out for moving forward in Ohio MMA. If you enjoyed this episode of Forged in Ohio, then don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. Speaking of subscribing, if you're watching on YouTube, click that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave the video a like. And you can also find the show at Forged in Ohio on both Instagram and Facebook. Thank you all for watching or tuning in. As always, I've been your host, Jake Murrin, and this was Forged in Ohio.